maybe a pinch of MSG or something like that. No, no, not pinch of MSG. You want to use the whole fist. Niece and nephew, fisting okay if it come to MSG. <laughs> I was actually thinking the same thing. Chef Brian Tsao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger review, most traditional egg fried rice Adam Leo. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to give a shout out to all of my amazing sous chef level patrons. Thank you so much for your support. You, along with all the patrons, in fact, really do make a difference in this channel. And for those of you who are watching, please consider becoming a patron. Visit the link in the description below. By becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like discounts off my merch store, but more importantly, sous chef level patrons get priority on suggesting what I react to next. Finally, do me a big favor and follow my band Lost Becomes on Instagram. You can check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. If you like big riffs, heavy metal music, something that's good to work out to, this will be your jam. And with that out of the way, let's react to Uncle Roger reacting to someone else. Some shit. Yangzhou fried rice is most traditional version of egg fried rice. And today we review MasterChef winner, nephew Adam Liao making it man bun, goatee, and expensive watch. Is he the Asian Joshua Wiseman? And look at his kitchen. It whiter than hospital. Hiya. He looks like he's uh, straight out of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, <laughs> where uh, my sandwich shop, Mission Sandwich Social, is out of. So you're probably wondering why you've never heard of Yangzhou fried rice. That's not true. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Well, if you're Chinese, you probably have. But if not, it's probably just called fried rice in your local. Uncle Roger likes his voice. So soothing. Is all a kind of a, a permutation of Yangzhou fried rice. Yangzhou is a mm. these things. Sick. Chinese cleavers, obviously. Hi, your nephew Adam. Just one cleaver used for everything. You get two for one, and why your cleaver so big? It's not about the size, nephew Adam. It's how you use it. Hello, aunties. That is a gigantic fucking cleaver. I've never seen one that big in person. The one that is uh, directly in front of him, that's the most common size. And I can attest, you know, I, I agree with Uncle Roger. Chinese restaurants that I have worked in in the past, the chefs used one knife, basically all of service. It was just the one cleaver. They did it for everything. And you know, the cleaver is a very versatile knife. It's a different technique using a cleaver versus a Western style knife, like an eight inch or nine inch Western style knife that has a smaller blade or not uh, as wide of a blade. They're just different, but both work equally well. And then actually to add to the Yangzhou uh, fried rice, uh, Yangzhou fried rice is, you know, can be found in basically any Chinese restaurant. What makes it stand out from other types of fried rice is it typically has many different types of protein and usually is um, is left white so they don't put soy sauce in it uh, to give it that brown hue. That That's like the, the most notable thing I think you'll notice once you look at it to differentiate it from different fried rices. All the ingredients have to be cut really, really well. It's kind of a way for them yeah. to show off their knife work. This all correct so far, but why his kitchen so bright? <laughs> it look like he in heaven. Am I watching Bruce Almighty or something? It kind of looks like the, the room uh, in the Matrix, in the last Matrix movie, when Neo walks into the room and meets the the guy who, what the hell is that dude's name? The guy who created the Matrix, minus all the TV screens. It is really bright and blown out. If the most colorful thing in the kitchen is you, you fucked up. But you can use any different types of ingredients that you might like. I've got here some carrot, Good. spring onion, some garlic. Good. No, 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 no garlic. Yangzhou fried rice is Chinese style mm -hmm. fried rice. No garlic. Garlic yep. more for like Southeast, Southeast Asian Station. style yep, fried rice. Go. Like Indonesian style or Malaysian style, yep. like what Uncle Roger make. Small mistake. Small mistake. Yeah, so Chinese style, uh, typically, uh, I mentioned in past videos, I've worked in Chinese restaurants before and I've never seen them put garlic into the fried rice. They would occasionally for staff meal and stuff like that, but it's much more common as Uncle Roger mentioned in uh, Southeast Asian style preparations. Adam mentioned something about cutting everything consistently. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, that's for the most part true. In past restaurants that I've seen made, uh, are pe were peas, cha siu or roast pork, uh, chicken cubes, chicken breast cubes, and shrimp. But the shrimp wasn't cut, it was baby shrimp. So those were bigger than the 
um, small dice, carrots and, and chicken and, and chasio and stuff like that. Minor detail, but overall I would agree everything needs to be cooked uh, to the cons to a consistent size. Bamboo it shoot, also helps with peas? texture. Correct. Now this is Chinese Definitely cured peas. ham. Chinese cured ham, good for you. On a Chinese restaurant probably just uses regular leg, leg ham or even um, Cantonese roast pork or even Chinese sausage, something like that, which is easier to get. But if you can get your hands on Chinese cured ham like this one, it's this guy really very, talked very a lot. For ingredient. <laughs> Just say Chinese cure ham. He got a whole story for one ingredient. Also some cooked chicken giblets. giblets. Nice. All of these ingredients as you cut them up and you bite into them in the rice, it's about creating texture. I would have rather used just regular chicken. I, I love um, ch chicken gizzards, giblets and all that stuff. I know I'll like this rice if you put that in there. But as far as the Yangzhou fried rice that I've seen made, that I've made typically, we'll just have cubed up chicken. Some prawns, some shiitake nice, mushrooms. Nice, nice, prawn nice, nice, mushroom nice. nice. As well. Egg, of course. And of course, you have this. this ah, is the most rice, important, important part. part. Let's see. Cooked, cold, overnight in the fridge, so that it's got a chance. Correct, correct. Overnight, nice. over rice, not bad. But this rice has actually been cooked in chicken stock. It's not just mm. nice touch. Of course, well, nice chicken stock for rice. Uncle Roger and I seem to be in agreement of pretty much everything. So far, so good. They might add some uh, chicken powder in when they're frying the rice, which is very, very common. Maybe a pinch of MSG or something like that. No, no, not pinch of MSG. You want to use the whole fist. Niece and nephew, fisting okay if it comes to MSG. Oh God. <laughs> but if you can, the traditional way of making that Yangzhou style fried rice is to cook the rice in chicken stock first. We use leftover rice because we want rice to be a bit dry for egg fried mm -hmm. rice. But his leftover rice still look a bit sticky. See? It's still sticking to his hand. Uncle Roger yeah, predict it might clump that. up a little bit later. Maybe tossing gonna be difficult. The rice for egg fried rice, you want it to be drier than my ex-wife. The labour intensive part. I've got to chop up all these ingredients into about half centimetre dice. In French cooking, you'd call that a masse A ma masse what? Masse what? He does talk a lot. <laughs> He's giving you a lot of information and I struggle with this in my videos. In editing, I have uh, the wonderful Jordan Herridge, but Jordan edits for me now. He's been editing for this channel for a while, but we struggle with that. You know, with my cooking videos, there's so much information I want to give you and, you know, we have to, there's, it's a balance between how much we talk and how much information we give you before it gets boring or annoying and getting to the video or editing in such a way that keeps you engaged. It's always a balancing act and it's not easy. I don't know how many videos this guy produces on his own. It's clearly well produced, but I do agree with Uncle Roger and this has nothing to do with the dish actually. So let me move on quickly from this, but I do agree. He does talk a bit much. So do I though. That's what this entire channel is built on. Me just talking shit. So maybe I should shut up. Nah, that's not what you guys are here for. You, you want to hear me bullshit. A I uh, don't use French cooking term. You're making Chinese style egg fried rice. Don't show off your Le Cordon Bleu bullshit. <laughs> I, uh, just say chop. Centimeter for all these ingredients. The prawns I can probably leave a little bit bigger. And this music. Form cubes is very important. Nice I mean chopping cuts. good, but what is with this music? This look like music for charity we joke. I feel like any moment now, they're gonna be phone number coming up on screen telling you where to donate. <laughs> but the price of $3 a month, you too can help this Australian chef get haircut. Make him look less homeless. <laughs> nice chopping technique. And the important part of the dish, obviously, is for everything to be cut to the same size. He correct, Yangzhou fried rice, every ingredient need to chop to same size. That's why you chop it to size of the pea. Because you cannot chop pea, so make everything the same size as pea, then everything same size. Uncle Roger, Makes sense. big brain. <laughs> nice. Now you really do get a lot of flavour from this cured ham. Char siu, you know, the Cantonese roast pork, or even the lap chong, the Cantonese style sausages will give you a lot of flavor as well, but it's important He's to have still chopping. Kind of <laughs> ingredient that's gonna add <laughs> a lot of depth and umami to the dish because the seasoning- How many minutes now? Come on. Oh, there's no- Fire rice need to be fast. 
Stop talking so, so much. Oh, All right, listen, man. Uh, as far as it, this is getting kind of fucking boring, he, you know, he did mention, okay, uh, this uh, cured ham is flavorful. I would have cut it there. Again, nothing to do with the dish. So I just want to mention all of his nice cut, knife cuts, perfect, precise, very organized. He's setting up his mise en place. So he clearly knows what he's doing in the kitchen. He won Master Chef. So, you know, he's clearly qualified to do this. I didn't win Master Chef, you know what I mean? Guy's doing great on the cooking front, talking a little too fucking much. <laughs> that the actual speed of his chopping. This guy's slower than Starbucks Wi-Fi. Well, but it's important to have some kind of ingredient that's gonna provide a lot of depth and umami to the dish because the seasoning that goes into a fried rice is actually not very much at all. There's no heavy sauce, there's no no even soy sauce. I'm just mm. gonna season this. Okay, no yeah, soy sauce. Point. No soy sauce yeah. actually okay. Uh, no soy sauce typically for Yangzhou fried rice and actually a lot of home style fried rice. Even in my fried rice video, I use pretty minimal soy sauce. I actually don't want it to be super dark or super soy -y. Uh So yeah, I agree with that. But like he say, make sure all your ingredients got good flavor. Otherwise your fire is gonna be so bland, Jamie Oliver gonna serve it at his restaurant. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. The flavor of the ingredients is what gives the dish its flavor. All of these things combined together gonna give us a nice kind of base. The rice is gonna go in with some of the egg. Show a shot of his hand for what? See, even the camera guy get bought, he start focusing on random <laughs> shit. I was actually thinking the same thing. I was like, why did they cut to his hand? <laughs> Maybe that was uh, his editor, like, fucking with him a little bit. <laughs> Eggs next. I just need to Egg good. those up a little bit. Nice cracking, mm. but crack on flat side of oh, Nice chopstick with good. Head over to the wok and finish it off. Crack on the flat surface a lot easier and uh, typically uh, neater too. Good, good. Now there's actually two different traditional methods of making Yangzhou fried rice. They're either called silver over gold or gold mm. over silver. So either egg over the rice, so rice first then egg or egg first then rice. I always do, always, always do uh, uh, egg first. I commonly notice in Japanese and Korean fried rice preparations, they do the rice first, then the egg. Not my preferred method. I find that cooking the eggs first give you more um, consistent grains of egg rather than it coating the egg coating the rice. Personal preference, which means it's better. Silver over gold method, you fry the eggs first and then put the rice on top of the eggs. And the gold over the silver, you fry the rice and then pour the eggs on top. Correct, there are two methods, but niece and nephew, just use silver over gold. Cook the egg first. Go over silver, more difficult. Don't do go over silver. Uncle Roger got no faith in you. You're not Uncle Wang Kang, you're gonna fuck it up. Dude, still one of my favorite videos I did. Actually, I need to do more Wang Kang videos. If I'm remembering correctly, someone in the Patreon where I give priority for um, rec suggesting new videos mentioned I should do more Wang Kang. For gold over silver, when you're mixing raw eggs into rice, you really have to be tossing that over very high heat, otherwise it's just gonna end up with an omelet. For the other one, for the silver over gold, you fry the eggs first until the eggs break down and the rice goes over the top. So let's get started. So as with all what oh. cooking starts with a- He finally start cooking. What, how long, six and a half minute in, he finally start cooking Holy in this shit. cooking video. This guy takes so long, he giving me more blue ball than Auntie Esther. <laughs> But the wok very nice. The smoke coming out, good heat. I'm gonna add more oil when I fry the rice and eggs. Oil good. For now, we just want a bit of oil to oh, hold all of these other ingredients together. Hot wok, very good, hot oil. <laughs> garlic. No garlic, no garlic. Remember, mm. no garlic for Yangzhou fried rice. No spring onion, too early. Whoa, okay. Um, I would not have done the garlic first and I agree with Uncle Roger, I don't think garlic should be in this fried rice. I wouldn't have done the garlic first because the wok was hot, the oil was hot, garlic has a lot of sugar, it can burn easily. By making that the first thing, you're gonna burn it or at least get it dark and caramelized, which is not what you want from a Yangzhou fried rice. And then he did the criminal sin of putting the scallion in the beginning. Now, before you give me shit, yes, in my video, I did put scallion early on, but I did the white segments of the scallion, which are much more robust and drier. It won't wilt as easily. And it wasn't the first ingredient. I'm kind of surprised by this, really surprised. And that Adam Liad dude looks, you know, at least part Asian. So you should know better. 
You should know better, Adam. Okay, I know why you put spring onion in there now. Because the heat bring out spring onion flavor. That correct. But just put at end, all your rice ready. Just put spring onion at the side of wok. The spring onion fall down touching the side of wok. That enough heat to bring out spring onion flavor. You put so early, it's gonna wilt. The next yep. thing I wanna add in is the cured pork because the fat will render into that oil and give us a lot of flavor. That's okay, correct. I would have done the egg first, then the garlic and the scallion, the white segments of the scallion, which it looks like they are in there. Or I would have done the ham first, and like he said, rendered out that oil, put in the carrots. The carrots are gonna, you know, is one of the things that's gonna take longest to cook. The chicken gizzards look like that they were pre-cooked already, so it's just a matter of warming it up. I, I'm not a huge fan of his order of ingredients. The chopping, very good. See, very even. Good job, nephew Adam. And the prawns and chicken. However, oh, nice. All right, that's, I would agree with that. Putting the prawns, uh, the shrimp at the end, because that's one of the things that cook the fastest. All right. Prawn, chicken, good. Peas at the end. Yep. Okay. Peas, and I'm just He's already season. cooked. Nice tossing. It's okay. salt. Salt, okay. That looks pretty good. So I'll take that out and set that to one side. See here? See okay. here, this spring onion already wilting, <laughs> starting to turn yellow. Hi, yeah, what I tell you, it mm. won't look good. You know, but one yellow spring onion, it looked like it got jaundice. Now, if your wok's looking a bit dirty at this point, you can brush it out under the sink, but actually, no, no need, need to, to clean it. More oil going in, then in with the eggs. Egg, okay. good, nice, sort of good oil. Around. Good. Start to break up. Nice stirring technique. And as soon as I sort of get a little bit dry. I, number one, I think the oil wasn't hot enough. For me, the oil needs to be hot enough for as soon as you put in the egg, it starts to bubble up. And then with the eggs. Egg, good. So there's some sear, nice. but it's not bubbling. You know what I mean? And that's a lot of mass of egg and that's going to cool the pan. Your pan's already not hot enough. Maybe if he only put in one egg's worth, it would have been hot enough, but put in like, what, four or five eggs, and then that mass is gonna cool the oil. It's started to bubble, but then when all the mass was added, it cooled down the pan. Uncle Roger think that it may be a bit overcooked it a bit too dry. You want the egg a little bit wetter. Uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think for me, when I make my egg fried rices, I like the egg very well done. Then it has a nice separation from the actual rice. What I think Uncle Roger is referring to more is that the oil should have been hotter. If that was the case, when you put the egg in, it would have cooked faster. More separation of egg from oil so that when you add in the rice, the oil is still there to keep it moist and to coat the rice and keep the grain separation. What's happened here is that the oil wasn't hot enough. He poured in the egg, it cooled down the pan. When he was stirring the egg, the egg and the oil started to mix together. And now all that oil is in the egg rather than on the pan. And that's why it's giving it its dry appearance. Not the end of the world. This is not wrong or terrible, I think this will still be a delicious, delicious fried rice. Just little tweaks to his technique that could have been used a little bit more refined, in my opinion. Don't let your egg fried rice be whiter than Elon Musk on holiday. That's when we can put our rice in. Now the rice is gonna start to absorb the oil. That rice does, that rice looks a little moist. To me, looks like a lot of rice for that size wok, which means that he's not gonna get the wok hay, he's not gonna get the sear that he needs, and he's gonna have to leave the rice in there longer than it needs to be because, again, there's so much mass. There's only so much surface area on the pan that's gonna give you the transfer of the heat, give you the wok hay, but also it's gonna be harder to mix. Now this is why you want day old rice. Yeah, that's the tip's punching good. Use that's a the lot back of, rice of your wok, wok tool to like. push the rice against the wok. Correct. That I agree with. He's using the back end of the spoon. You always want to use the back end of the spoon to push the grains apart, but you can see this rice is overcooked, uh, or I'm sorry, cooked with too much water because it's very clumpy, very, very clumpy. And you can see when he's pushing the rice, it's smushing, it's not separating. So that rice, either uh, he cooked it with too much water or it's not actually day-old rice. Maybe he made it earlier in the day. And the oil, and that's gonna give us nice separate grain. Salt in, because that's pretty much our only seasoning here. And then the rest of our ingredients back in. Nice, nice. Now start tossing. 
Toss, toss. And that is the technique. What? You have to toss the rice nephew yeah. at them. Don't just use your spoon to scoop it. Yeah. Also, by using the front end of the spoon, you're cutting the grains. So you're not going to have nice whole grains in the rice. The rice was too soft, too moist. You know, that's going to make it easier to cut, even if it's day old rice. So you don't have the nice grain separation. Got to admit, like his ingredient choice, his knife work, very strong, but I'm not liking the execution at all. That rice stickier than nephew Nigel's. Yeah, he didn't toss. You know, I remember I showed you, I don't have any tools here, but when you're making fried rice, the wok is designed to toss the product bottom over top, bottom over top. You're using the spoon to facilitate the tossing. When you toss, the oil mixes in, all the ingredients mixes in. What he's doing here is he has his wok sitting over the burner and he's using his spoon to push it. Number one, you're beating up the rice and it's not getting wok hay. This is Young Joe fried rice. Yeah. A lot of cut rice grains. You can see they're all different sizes. There doesn't appear to be any form of, you know, or not much grain separation. There's lots of clusters in there. His ingredient choices were great. The bamboo shoot, the Chinese ham, the chopped prawns, like that's all fantastic. His knife work is great, but that is not a well-executed Yangzhou fried rice. Also, um, for me, Yangzhou fried rice needs a touch of white pepper. Let's see, let's see. Hmm, the rice have no charring on there, no wok hay. Ah, and remember, see. no there garlic for Yangzhou no fried rice. Too. And don't put your spring onion in so early. When this video come out, Uncle Roger gonna be in Jakarta. Because remember, Gordon Ramsay challenging Uncle Roger. He said he go to Indonesia more time than me. So now we're gonna fix that. Um, uh, what am I gonna grade this? One out of 10. Um, you know, I've become kind of gun shy about grading now because that Jamie Oliver butter chicken video that I did, I gave it a six. You guys made a good point. I gave a six to a butter chicken dish that had no butter in it. Point taken, very fair. Maybe I was feeling very generous and happy that day. Who knows, but I'm a little gun shy. My honest answer though is uh, for this Yangzhou fried rice, ingredient choice, great. Knife work, great. Technique, pretty poor. So I'm gonna average this to a six. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And until the next video, I am Chef Brian Sound, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.